The economic reopening will fail. Hey everybody, JJ here. You're watching Bull Boom Bear Bust. It is Tuesday, May 5th. Welcome and thank you for joining us today. Uh, that's not just me saying that. This economic reopening, there's a lot of hope out there that we're miraculously going to see this V-shaped recovery and that jobs are going to come roaring back. Well, there's already a lot of evidence out there that that's not going to happen. We're going to talk about uh, some individuals that are saying just this, that this reopening is going to fail. And the Texas reopening has been um, seen with empty malls and restaurants. Also, broke states are borrowing borrowed money. Borrowing borrowed money. Uh, rising food prices are already here. They're happening. We've been warning about that for years. Um, it's happening right now. And evictions are starting to occur in many places. I'm going to get into some numbers on that. So let's get started right here. And this is a Bloomberg article via Yahoo Finance. Billionaire Sam Zell sees economy um, permanently scarred by a pandemic. So not only is, is he saying it's not going to be a V-shaped recovery, he's saying there's going to be permanent damage. And yes, we've also said that same exact thing here on this channel. All right, now before we get into this article, to have an economic recovery, first you have to have an economy. Now you may call what we had before the shutdown, you may call that an economy but ask yourself is a service sector economy where jobs are dependent on people taking on debt and swiping credit cards is that a real economy or should a real economy be, be based on production and manufacturing right so we have a service sector economy it's about 70 percent of all jobs even before the collapse was a service sector so people working in the hospitality industry uh, servers restaurants people working in in stores and a lot of them are shut down now uh, we see a lot of new bankruptcies popping up there in the retail sector. Uh, retail apocalypse is continuing, uh, especially now after this pandemic. Uh, we have Neiman Marcus, uh, J.C. Penney's on their last leg, right? And many other stores likely are not going to survive this shutdown. And we've reported on the retail apocalypse here several times. And I'm sure we're going to see, uh, as we progress into the year 2020, we're going to see a lot more stores, a lot more uh, brick and mortar retailers popping up on this list. And also, this is shifting more wealth into Amazon. More people now are relying on Amazon. Uh, Amazon was already dominating uh, these brick and mortar retailers, but now it's going to be even more escalated because of the shutdown and more people went online to shop. I right, have a quick excerpt out of this article here. Sam Zell, a billionaire known for buying up troubled real estate, said the pandemic will leave the same kind of impact on the economy and society as the Great Depression. 80 years ago, when I first started talking about the Great Depression and how this next downturn is going to be Great Depression 2.0, I was called a fear monger. Um, it was all doom and gloom. And now um, it's reality. I mean, it's happening. I mean, we are seeing unemployment numbers much worse already than the Great Depression. Um, this continues here with long lasting changes in human behavior that imperil many business models. Yes, humans, people are not going to be confident going forward what if this pandemic comes back what if uh, the government stops propping up everything what if they stop the bailouts what if they stop the stimulus checks right I'm hoping that people will wake up and finally realize what's happening we never had a real economy this was based on bank intervention bailouts lending and spending uh, liquidity injections into the banks so the banks could continue to lend to people uh, fractional reserve banking where banks lend out 10 times or more as much money as they have in reserves which also creates a false wealth effect because it allows people to go out and buy things that they don't have from money that doesn't actually exist right this is a complete fake economy and I think a lot of people uh, I'm hoping a lot of people are gonna wake up after this shutdown All Right. the article continues here quote too many people are anticipating a kind of V like recovery we're all going to be permanently scarred by having lived through this. Unquote. Also, uh, Mr. Zell, he expects the amount of social distancing and working from home to persist long after this outbreak is finished. But how are these small businesses going to survive when they have to have social distancing? Are they likely going to have to have their staff that they do have uh, clean more often and make sure people are separated? And they're also going to have to compete with unemployment. Remember, a lot of people are choosing to stay on unemployment because they're getting paid more because of all this federal government intervention. 
it's further incentivizing people not to work. I, and I believe that was already a problem even before the shutdown that a lot of people were incentivized not to work because it's easier just to live off a government paycheck. Now, of course, that's not always the case. There are some people that genuinely cannot find work even though they try and they try and they try. Um, the bad part about that is they no longer get counted as a statistic. So all those years when you heard about the 3.5% unemployment number, how great it was, it was the best economy ever, right? How many times did we hear that? Well, long-term unemployed individuals that couldn't find work were just no longer counted as a statistic. Now, in our next report, we're going to talk about the real unemployment number. And we know in the past six weeks, the real number of people unemployed is closer to 50 million. The official number that they're touting is about 30 million. But remember, a lot of people were unable to even enter their information to begin to qualify for unemployment because the websites were down, uh, the systems are overloaded, uh, states are not able to get through all of these uh, new applicants for people that lost their jobs. Right, so even though we all pay taxes to keep the system running, uh, the system's not going to be there for us when there's a major event, and we're witnessing it right now. All right, also something else Mr. Zell said here in this interview, quote, how soon will anybody get on an airplane? How soon will anybody stay in a hotel? How soon will anybody go to a mall? The fact that these places may be open doesn't necessarily mean that they'll be doing business, unquote. And let's take a look at this article right here. This is news.trust.org. Texas back in business barely as malls and restaurants are empty, right? So how can people go out and start shopping right after the malls reopen when we had one in three people that didn't pay their rent or their mortgage in April, right? Even before the shutdown, things were already bad. This was a fake economy. Most of the population was living paycheck to paycheck. Half the population couldn't even afford a $400 emergency expense. They had to take on debt, swipe a credit card or something like that were to happen. Um, we were already much worse off than we were at the financial crisis time because we had more debt. Uh, all types of debt were higher than the financial crisis. Mortgage, credit card, student loan debt, uh, personal loan debt. Right? It was all worse than the financial crisis, yet a lot of people out there drank the Kool-Aid. They they believed it. They believed that we had the best economy ever. And what that did, that gave the consumer confidence to continue to spend. And that had another impact. It also helped make the economy look better. When everybody's spending and not worried about what's going to happen tomorrow, then that creates the illusion. That creates jobs. When people stop spending and pull back, especially in a consumer-based economy, those jobs go away. And if the consumer doesn't come back, if the consumer is not confident or they're scared, Right? In this case, it's going to be a double whammy. We have scared people because of the infection, and we have financially strapped people who hopefully will, will learn a lesson after this and uh, not spend so foolishly, not take all these vacations that they don't really need to take, right? not go to all these amusement parks, not go to these sporting events and give hundreds of dollars to, uh, to athletes that make millions of dollars a year. All right? What about just the cost of drinks? You go to a bar or a nightclub, you're going to be spending, what, five, six, seven dollars for a drink. So a drink that's going to last you for five or ten minutes, you're spending, you know, sometimes five to ten dollars, depending on the how nice the club is, right? Right. So we live in a society that loves uh, partying. People love their drinks here in the United States, and it's like that through most of the world. But people love their smokes, they love their drinks, they love their entertainment, right? Nobody rarely, uh, people rarely want to work hard for their money. They're more likely to take a free handout. And um, the United States, our population, we've lived high on the hog for a long, long time. All right, now back to this article, though, on the Texas reopening. Here's a quote right here from a, a retail worker. Quote, I've seen one customer today. They didn't buy anything. There's absolutely no one coming around here. And this is Austin, Texas, which is actually one of the fastest growing cities in the United States. And uh, Austin did see a lot of people uh, moving from states like California for lower priced housing. And uh, definitely a booming city, and still we're seeing this reopening completely fail in the state of Texas. All right, speaking of failed states, uh, broke states borrow borrowed money. Uh, what's that about? Let's take a look at this article right here. And Wall Street Journal article, California is the first state to borrow money from the federal government to make unemployment payments. So we have the state of California that's broke, cannot pay their unemployment payments, they are borrowing money from a government that's in debt to the Fed, 24 trillion and counting. 
right? The system has failed. Do you think they're going to keep on just going into debt forever? There's going to be a limit. It's going to stop. And I think it's coming up in the very near future. You're going to see parabolic debt. like, And that's when you see hyperinflation. Now, to truly see hyperinflation, you have to have demand outstrip supply. And we're not seeing that yet. We're going to see some deflation in some areas of the economy. I think automobiles, I think the prices are going to come down. I think housing, we're going to see prices come down. Uh, once we get the April numbers and the May numbers, I think we're going to start seeing some declines um, in housing. But so far, what we do see is that a lot of this stimulus money is going to billionaires and large corporations. It's not getting into the hands of the people that need it. Now, of course, we did have the $1,200 stimulus check. That did not really go very far for a lot of people. Uh, for many people, that wasn't even enough to pay for one month's rent or mortgage. A lot of this stimulus money, a lot of this bailout money went to large corporations. And just ask yourself, if you have a president right now that's a multi-billionaire, do you really think he's going to have the middle class and the working class's best interest at heart? Or is he going to bail out his buddies? I mean, I think this is pretty simple to see. Um, up until now, there were a lot of rumors that, no, this, this one was different. You know, this president's going to be for the working class. Um, but when it all is said and done, they're typically just puppets of the bank. The Fed ends up issuing more debt. Um, we had this president say he was going to get rid of the debt. He criticized the previous administration for the bailouts and the spending. And now he has eclipsed, he's doubled and tripled the amount of stimulus and bailouts as the previous administration. So you cannot make this type of stuff up. This is blatant, uh, in-your-face, uh, just lies and corruption. I mean, it's not going to change unless the people wake up. So I'm hoping a lot of people start waking up if they haven't already from this shutdown. But my fear is people are still going to buy the party line. They're going to buy the, the line on the right. Oh, this was the greatest economy ever. It was only this shutdown that caused things to start going bad. Right? We have a divided population. People are in boxes. One's on the left, one's on the right. They're not going to question the system. They're all going to just agree with their own people on their side of the aisle instead of looking at the real problems. I'll wrap it up right here. Wall Street Journal, another article here from them. A U.S. Treasury expects to borrow $4.5 trillion in fiscal year as stimulus spending soars. Even if people believe this is a recovery uh, when the economy reopens, if things start looking a little bit better, this is not a real recovery. This is just a government going into debt via the Fed, via money that's created out of nothing. It's an illusion. It's fake. This is not real wealth. This is not real prosperity. You have to have manufacturing, uh, people creating goods. And speaking of creating goods, let's talk about the meat shortage. We've reported on it here a few times. There are a lot of meat uh, places, a lot of meat processing centers that are shut down because of lack of employees. A lot of people don't want to work again because they're scared. There's the fear out there of the sickness. They also have to compete with the unemployment payments that are a big incentive to uh, for people not to go back to work. Uh, we have supply chain disruptions where the uh, a lot of the meat suppliers and the farmers, they don't have the proper resources to change their supply chain to start giving it to people that need the food. Uh, a lot of these farms, for example, a lot of these meat processing centers, sold directly to restaurants and most of the country still shut down so yes the meat shortages are real food shortages are real and food inflation is real when you have demand that outstrips supply because of the shutdown you're going to see rising prices recent article right here one in five wendy's is out of beef and we're already starting to see rising prices and empty shelves in grocery stores for meat items and perishables especially and we've only been on lockdown for, what, six weeks? This is likely to get a lot worse. And especially now with all the people that are financially strapped, what's going to happen to the beef industry, to the farmers? Uh, as we saw in Texas, people are not going back into restaurants. There's not going to be a V-shaped recovery. So I'm not here to bust anybody's hope, but I just want you to be prepared for what lies ahead of us. Hopefully, after we get through this rough patch, hopefully things will start getting better. I'm hoping a lot of this um, market rigging and uh, a lot of, I hope a lot of the fake economy comes out into the open for a lot of people to be able to see. And uh, maybe we'll see a, a grand awakening of, of people realizing what kind of, uh, what kind of system we're in. Uh, but until then, you know, I hope you're all well, hunkered down. Thank you to everybody for your support, for being here uh, to watch these videos. 
I'd like to hear from you down in comments. Let me know what you think about this V-shaped recovery that we, we've been hearing the rumors about. Is it going to be a V-shaped recovery or is Texas a prime example of what's going to happen nationwide? People are going to be scarred from this. Just like Mr. Zell said, they're going to be scarred. They're not going to be confident. They're still scared. Uh, and a lot of people honestly are just broke. Um, even if they weren't scared, uh, a lot of people just do not have the money to go out and spend as the rich continue to get richer and the middle class, the poor, continue to get further and further uh, enslaved in debt. Thanks everybody for watching. Bye for now.